What's up Photoshop fam? I'm Rick Navarro and this is the Pixel Laundry Retouching Academy. All right guys, welcome back. I had this project come across my desk this morning and I thought it would be actually really helpful to some of you guys um, to learn uh, what art directors and creative directors um, are looking at in terms of retouching on uh, not just any regular project, but what is kind of a difficult category of retouching, uh, which is lingerie or bourgeois retouching. Um, but, uh, you know, if I wanted to take it one step further um, to make it even more difficult, plus size um, uh, retouching for lingerie or bourgeois uh, has additional challenges because we want to maintain the integrity of the image, but we also want to make the model look beautiful and sexy and natural uh, without going too far, uh, unless that's the style. Uh, of the particular client, but um, you know, with that particular category of image, you have some really unique challenges. So I just, this isn't necessarily a retouching how-to video, but an art direction how-to. And it's more along the lines of what, you, as a retoucher, you should be looking for uh, to train your eyes to kind of save yourself some work in the long run. Because if you learn to address these issues up front earlier, um, that means less revisions, less redos and less time you have to go back and spend time on an image, which is going to speed up your pipeline and your workflow process. And it's going to help you out greatly. So I've got a few images up here. Um, I am currently art directing for, uh, for my team at Pixel Laundry. And basically what I'm going to do is I create a new layer here, a markup layer. This is the original. This is the retouch that, that the team has sent me. And then this is my markup layer. And I'm just giving notes. Uh, for them so that they can go back and make revisions. Uh, my goal here is ultimately to kind of be learning the individual client's style and preferences. And it, every client is different, no matter who, what they think is standard or what should be normal in terms of retouching. I've learned that th throughout the years and working with several clients that there is no real standard. And the art of retouching is very, very subjective. What one client wants and what, what cl one client thinks is natural and normal and should be a part of every retouch is not necessarily true from client to client. Um, there are just things that are kind of like um, basic expectations, but I say that very, very lightly because again, that's just very subjective and we find that um, it's not always uh, consistent from client to client. So, um, so this is a plus size, uh, plus size model here, and we're just going to go through a few of these images uh, so you can see what I'm looking for, what I, the clients are looking for, and what oftentimes uh, many art directors or creative directors are looking at in terms of uh, green lighting an image for the next phase. Okay, so um, one thing we're just going to start at the bottom and go all the way to the top, and we'll go through a couple images. A lot of times, what we see is we want to close these gaps down a little bit and I'm just going to make any note that I leave for my team that isn't kind of maybe just normal retouching stuff. I'm going to expound. I'm going to leave them a, a specific note as to what exactly needs to happen. Okay. I'm just going to work my way up on this one. There's a lot of garter belts and a lot of uh, thigh high stockings. What I'm looking for is basically that these are relatively straight and that the garments don't look like they pull or squeeze into the skin too much. Now anything where there's like a satin sort of material like this here, um, and I'll show you the original. Um, you know, a lot of times they don't shoot very well, to be honest. So, you know, a lot of the clients will have us remove all of the wrinkles and kind of straighten out the lines and the curves. We want to make sure that she has a feminine shape which is usually an hourglass sort of shape um, and that the garments look relatively clean and not cheap. The, the more wrinkled they look, um, they tend to look cheap. Now, you know, the, the thing is, is that if, if she starts twisting around or if the stylist on set isn't flattening out straps, which is another thing I'm looking for here, or the, that their straps are flattened out, uh, it definitely makes it a little bit more difficult. And that's a fix that can happen on set very quickly um, that takes us and the post end much, much longer. 
So I'm looking for a relatively smooth surface here in the wrinkles, maybe a little bit more clean up here on these seams. And all I'm doing is highlighting these things for my retouchers to go back and kind of work out. We also want to take a look at all the lines and make sure that they're they're not distracting or that they don't look bunchy um, like this right here. We want to make sure that these bras fit and that they sit in the breast properly. So I want to actually close this gap down because you can see where her breasts kind of come in here, but the cup is a little bit outside. So I'm just going to mark this here. These are liquify adjustments. We'll be creating a video later down the line showing you how to adjust these in the liquify tool set, which is awesome. I'm also going to reshape here. With plus, there's a lot of challenges, you know, um, but it's not impossible. Plus is a really great market in this country uh, where we're seeing a lot of explosion in terms of um, uh, sales. So that means that there's a lot of clients that have a demand for plus. I want the cleavage to be even. And it's important to look at the image again, close up, but also far away so I can get a sense of the overall shape. And sometimes what I'll do is if it's faster for me to make the adjustment than it is to me, write a note, send it to the retoucher, have them, um, you know, rework it. I'll come in here and make quick last minute adjustments. But my job is not to be in here retouching. It's, it's to be in here marking up for the retoucher, you know, and sometimes to know what you're looking for, you know, uh, as, a, as, as a professional retoucher, I've worked on both ends, you know, from the management side and from the retouching side. So it's kind of like, I have a good sense of what the retoucher is going to go through. So I also don't want to be giving them an unnecessary exorbitant amount of work that's going to slow down their pipeline but I also need them to do what they've been hired to do. So I'm gonna push this just a pinch and I'll push that just a pinch. And I'll probably later on do a few more adjustments, but these are the adjustments that I'm looking for uh, with this particular uh, image for this particular retouch. Okay, so here's another one, create a new layer, purely markups at this point. And I'm going through and looking for things that kind of stand out. Again, you know, I mentioned in another video, um, this is always a balancing act. It's an, always a balancing act of, of your time, the cost of images, you know, like what the client is paying for in terms of services rendered, um, a quality issue, like what, you know, how good the actual retouch is. We are, you know, we get these in batches and, you know, we may have 50, 100 of these higher end images to go through. So I, and, and a deadline, you know, so I can't spend three hours per image because if I'm only making X amount of dollars, you know, that three hours of image work has to be covered, has to be covered by that hourly rate or by the flat rate that's been negotiated. And so there's, there's always a balance that you have to figure out. Now you see how this fold goes under the skin. What I'm going to have the team do is reference this strap. And give you a nice seam here with, with an actual strap. Again, not easy, possible. A little bit time consuming, but we got to balance it out because some of this stuff is doable within a reasonable amount of time frame and it does take a little bit of extra attention. And that's just kind of the nature of plus, period. 
Uh, and that's something you want to keep in mind while you're negotiating your projects. You know, you, you get a client in and they're requesting uh, lingerie. So immediately in our minds, you know, the red flag goes off and says, OK, lingerie. It's not a red flag as much as it is, um, you know, um, just being aware of what the requirements of the project are. Um, so that category of imagery requires more work, which means it requires more time, which means it's going to require a higher rate. Most of the people that we work with understand that. Um, it's also probably why they're hiring out. They either don't have time or don't want to deal with it internally. And that's fine. That's what we're here for. As a service provider, it's the same, same will be true for you. So you keep that in mind when you're negotiating your rates and you're negotiating your time and how much time you think it's going to take you to do that. After you get a little bit of uh, experience under your belt, you'll be able to gauge that a little bit better and say, hey, this is going to take me X amount of hours and my hourly rate is this. So then that, all right, that will lead you to a, a per image or excuse me, uh, a, a quote for your clients. And then you can address accordingly. So this is a good one where I'm going to kind of pull out to kind of see the overall shape. I'm going to pull her in just a little bit again, keeping in mind a feminine shape, but also not liquefying her to the point where it doesn't show that she's a plus size girl. We're not trying to avoid that fact. We're just trying to clean it up a little bit. So this is kind of, this may or may not be all the notes on this particular project, but these are the ones, or this particular image, but this, these are the ones that stand out to me right now. So once I have my team kind of go back in here and address these issues, then I'm going to look at them again, look at, leave, I have my team leave the notes that I left for them on there even after they retouch them. That way I can reference my own notes, see what I was looking at, and then take the image from there. My goal is not to have several rounds of retouching or revisions. My goal is to get in and get out with the most accuracy at the most quality as possible. Sometimes, honestly, I mean, let's just be real. Like sometimes it is not possible because of the, the nature of the image or the image is shot so poorly or not enough attention was paid on set um, that, that we're not gonna be able to fix that. It, the adage that, you know, we'll fix it in post is not it does not always ring true and in this particular case the client is not always correct so you know i have to be mindful of that and, and sometimes again um you, you have to you know you have to educate your clients on that they may be a mom and pop shop you know there's so many e-commerce uh retailers right now that they're just you know uh, which is awesome, you know, they're, they're just starting out in their garage and, and they're, you know, they've got a dream and maybe an eBay shop and they're just trying to figure this thing out. So um, a lot of them are learning through tutorials online, such as this one um, or other, you know, or other means. And it just takes practice, you know, or they don't have the proper gear in order to address these issues appropriately, you know, so you kind of have to help out and that's fine. We love doing that. but they cannot throw everything back to you and expect the images to look top tier because they have to start from a place that is top tier. Okay, this one isn't that bad. I'm gonna try, this is always tricky, lace and then things under it like uh, nipple cover covers or um, like crotch covers and then placing lace over them. A lot of time they try to be flesh colored so that helps but if they've got any sort of shine or reflection to them we try to knock them down a little bit. Um, we also inform the client that this becomes a very difficult thing um, after the fact to make look natural. Lace and content aware fill are not friends. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Stamping, 
um, using the patch tool, any of our normal retouch tools and lace or patterns or prints, you know, repeating um, patterns are, are extremely difficult to, to make look correct. So this is just something we kind of, we work around. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And if they can make these fixes on set, it is definitely preferable than trying to fix that after the fact. Flyaway hairs as well is a bit of a challenge because you don't want a hard, hard edge on hair, but you also don't want a mess of it, like a nest of messy hair because it's distracting. So these are the notes I have here for this. I think that overall this looks good. These are just little things I want to address. Um, anyways, but hair um, is a bit of a challenge. See, so like these kind of flyaways right here, I think are really good. This can be liquefied in. I don't, I don't necessarily want to clone stamp this out because it's going to give a, an unnatural edge. We don't want that, but we do want an overall shape. So again, I'm looking at, you know, shape here. Does the product, which is what is being sold, look good? And, you know, once I get to that place, then, then I'm in a good place and I can move on to the next one. Okay, let's start from the top down this time. New layer. Again, makeup I usually don't mess with because makeup is very, very specific. But in this particular case, I think we can maybe soften up these edges just a pinch. That's why I've been making a note to blend it. She looks a little bruised and discolored. In this particular project, this client hasn't hired us for color correction, so I'm not even addressing color correction at this point. I'm gonna pull all of these straps down. If you're looking for flat straps, making sure that nothing is flipped, you know, that the straps look natural. And you're also looking for stress points. You know, lingerie is an interesting category because, um, you know, obviously the clothes are very skinny or skimpy. You know, there's not a lot you're working with. Um, you don't want the, um, it, you know, they, they may be product samples that a client has and they haven't, uh, they haven't got the actual sample. So it might be an ill-fitting, um, an ill-fitting garment as well. And, and in which case, you know, it fits close enough, but, you know, it may not fit properly. So sometimes the garment will squeeze in on the skin and it looks, it looks uncomfortable. And obviously as a retailer, you don't, you're not, you don't want that. Like you're trying to sell, sell something. So you're trying to put it out there in its best light. So, you know, it'll be our job to make sure that these things look like they fit right and that they are properly fitting. It's a, it's a bit of a combination because honestly, some of this stuff really is so much easier to do on set. But if it's within our power to do it, you know, we try to do it. This is called a return. You know, sometimes you'll see a garment like on a back view or a front view um, well, let's just say on a back view, you'll see the garment that is in the front and it's returning back into the image. So we want to get rid of that. It creates a cleaner silhouette sometimes. Uh, and this is true whether the model is facing forward or backwards. Ill-fitting shoes. A lot of times you'll have you'll have models, you know, there'll be a couple girls in and they're different sizes, but they'll use the same shoe because that's what they have on set. And they'll use that same pair of shoes because it matches the outfit and even though it doesn't fit the girl's foot. So we kind of keep an eye out for that. Ill-fitting shoes, closing down the gaps, making sure that everything looks cohesive and that it looks like it's where it's supposed to be and how it's supposed to fit. In fact, I'm going to, now see, now that I pulled out, I want to straighten this line out. So I'm going to revise this note here because this should probably fit more like here. Pull it down. Okay, otherwise, shape looks good. Pretty happy with that. Moving on to the next one. Okay, I wanted to add one more because as soon as I shut all the recording gear off, I came across the most perfect image 
for notes and what you should be looking for. And I just want to add this as one extra bonus. Um, this is a great image uh, overall. Um, a lot of great work has already been done here. Here's where we started, as you can see. Um, you know, a ton of really great work in impressions, making sure that this thing fits right. Um, this is a great example of where the, the garment doesn't actually fit this particular model. So the challenge is, is making it look sellable. And this kind of has everything we're looking for in terms of making fixes uh, for, uh, for our client, uh, not only for the client, but also for uh, an art director who's looking to revise images that the team has sent to us. So here's what they've sent. Not a bad start. Skin looks good, looks pretty natural. Uh, but let's just start from the bottom real quick. Again, ill-fitting shoes. I've actually already marked this up, so I'm going to address some of the markups that I've already done. Ill-fitting shoes, we want to tighten down. Even stockings, looks pretty good. Laces, uh, I will say this about lace, it's, it's a kind of a forgiving material in terms of hiding uh, maybe things that need to get retouched out, like stuff like this, or even in the lace. It's almost like a camouflage when you go in here with a content aware fill. It's going to hide that stuff really, really well. Okay, straps look pretty good. Might fix this one here. See how it's twisting and rotating? We want that to be flat like this one here is working. All right, these are all flat. This looks good. I'm going to have them fix this. I want this strap to go all the way to the edge. Same here. And it's important that it sits on top of the skin and not flat with the skin, just like it's doing right there. A lot of times the shortcut retouchers will do is they'll take a pen tool and they'll draw a curve all the way around that and then delete everything or clean up everything outside of that. And what it does is it gives a very fake looking edge. I'll do a quick sample for you right here. And this is kind of a, a, a hack to try to clean up that edge. But you can see that looks very, very unnatural. Nobody is built in 2D, at least in the human world. And uh, without that little bump, that information there, it looks like it's a part of the skin as opposed to on top of the skin. We don't want that. That would be a, a, poor, uh, a poor execution of that technique. I do see that sometimes. You know, Sometimes the guys will get tired or get lazy and uh, they try to move quick. And if you're not paying attention, they'll, they'll you know, they'll see if it'll slide. Okay, so this is a real. This is what made me want to turn it back, turn everything back on, and add this on because this is really kind of bread and butter right here. So this bra does not fit this girl's bust, right? It's our job to kind of get this to sell as much as possible. You can see where her cleavage is right in here, and here, but this is where the cup is, and the breast should sit perfectly in the cup in order for it to look proper. So I got to stretch these things out and also move her cleavage down into that cup so it sits in, in line with where the garment is telling uh, us the cup should be. This is like her entire breast right here, but we wanna slide it down and then pull the garment out so that it looks right. And I left a note for them, breast should fill the cup, okay? So this is something you'll be looking for, not only in plus, but any in any in any garment. You want to make sure that the clothes look like they fit properly. Again, face looks decent. Maybe a few little things here in shadows. Okay. Flyaways look pretty decent. Not too mad at that. Nothing crazy distracting. Maybe this one. And this looks pretty natural. I'm not worried about that. Now, granted, if a client comes back and asks us to make those adjustments, we will. Looks like she's got some self-tanner on her hands. Okay, again, we're not necessarily hired in this particular case for color correction, but if it's super, super obvious and maybe a quick tweak, we'll throw it in there. Okay, that's it. Just wanted to show you that this is this is another markup of a, a pretty good image. 
uh, but that still needs a fair amount of work. And these are the things you're looking for in terms of getting a product to look uh, its best, look, getting a model to look its best, and to do really great work for your client. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope that helps. Keep your eyes open. Learning what to see is half of the battle. Uh, learning uh, what it is your art directors are looking for, what you should be looking for in bourgeois or in lingerie uh, will help you speed up your workflow and uh, make you a better retoucher. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and uh, we'll make some more of these in the future. Talk to you real soon.